and welcome to High 45 discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And we're your news reporters for this week. Here. <laughs> Uh, lots of good ones this week, actually. Lots of good stories, I think. Still lacking a laptop. Yeah. I'll be going off mine. Yay! <laughs> oh, man. Yep. A uh, good topic this week, actually. So, we'll mention the topic first. I think you should definitely, um, yeah, definitely start. I'm, I'm excited for that we're one. topic first, are we? Yeah, yeah, topic first. Cool. It's, it's, uh, it's about the idea of, like, memes and the idea of uh, the machine actually being in control by the machine, like, all technology being the actual main life form. Um, and how that actually regards and what the future of that is. So it's very singularity based. So the machine cool. taking over and controlling us. And yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'll, oh crap! I, I'll, I'll try not to be so pessimistic about it. <laughs> I tell you, I'll make I'll make up for the pessimism. Okay, I'll get cool. crazy pessimism. You be the you be yeah. the happy. I'll be the like, oh man, so bad. Uh, and you can be the happy like, oh, it's gonna be cool, man. It'll be cool. cool. She'll be right. She's good, mate. <laughs> okay, sweet. Um, apart from the the singularity <laughs> topic, uh, we've got other ones. Uh, a few actually. Uh, Brazilian police using Robocop style glasses. That's kind of kind of scary. Uh, then I've got this guy about doing. Oh no! And Square has actually started being promoted by Apple, and their revenues are just going exponential. Ones to watch. Square and Apple. Mm. It's like so a square a, apple. <laughs> like square watermelon. It's like a round thing in a square hole. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, a vision of a smart home? <laughs> you asked it like a No, question. fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> you did ask it like you're an iron rod burger. <laughs> <laughs> and go fuck yourself, <laughs> <laughs> um, After that one, I've got a, a really fantastic article which kind of links in a little bit with the singularity topic. Um, about this, uh, I'm not exactly sure what to call it. It was just an article in The Guardian. Just the title. The, internet, really good. Is the internet is over. It's just about Web 3.0, the future of the internet in that regard. Yeah. Really interesting, this one. Did I have a, am I going to do the third uh, one? Yeah, do the fourth one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly go to the other one. Um, uh, using algorithms to actually track uh, tech companies and where they're going, which companies you can use and stuff. Yeah. That's it. That's what's kind of sweet. Cool. So, all right, thanks for tuning in, Type 45. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, come on, they want more of us. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, do, they always want them. <laughs> Please don't I turn it off. This is going. Please don't turn it off now. Just, just keep going. Just put it in the side we've got, window. We've got Robocop. Just yeah, just drag us over to the side. Pull up Reddit on the main screen and just just cruise through. It'll be okay. It'll be good fun. We'll get through this together. I believe in you. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, you start off first. You got okay. Uh, Brazilian police to use Robocop style glasses at the World Cup. This sounds insane. Literally, uh, the 2014 World Cup, which I, is that soccer? I guess so. World I Cup, I think that's soccer. soccer. Yeah, um, what they're planning on doing is uh, equipping police with uh, HUD overlays, which actually can analyze and identify 400 faces a second. It then uploads it to a server where they've got 13 million faces indexed and then can identify. Like, in real time, uh, they're, they're doing it to identify criminals, but... Yeah, who's a criminal? It, it could be to identify anyone, but it... You know, for policing, that's, that's a pretty cool idea. Like, if you can... In a massive crowd, you can just scan around, and it just... It actually displays, like, a little red dot or something, I think. Uh, it, 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 anyway, it gives a signal to actually tell you this person ahead and <laughs> identifies them as they're a criminal. Watch them. <laughs> And this is going to be coming in 2014. 2014 like, and they like already this, have the tech. Yeah, they already yeah. got it. It's just they're waiting for the games oh, to come. Oh my god. So, oh man. That's pretty. That's, that's hectic. Cool. That, that's cool, but. That's cool. It, it, it is hectic. It's like getting very scary into the. Yeah, well, it'll just be like identify shit. Tristan Grace. Well, that's it. And then brings up you know, <laughs> everything about me crime, sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> you mean one go. <laughs> um. But seriously, like, what, what no. the hell is that? There's, like, okay, like, you know, Pandora's out of the box. Like, that's definitely happening. So we have to assume now in it. the next few years and so that every police officer, like, will just be able to look at you and see every bit of your history. Yeah. We have to start assuming that. So uh, that's yeah. scary on one half. I guess they already do that with your number plate now. True. Number plate, yeah. yeah that brings any up. difference. Put and they always face, look you like... up. They always get, you have to do your ID card and stuff. So yeah. that's true. I guess it's just in public you don't really want to be identified in. Yeah. But then again, there's the whole thing of like, if you're in public, you're yeah. legally allowed, you, you know, the people are legally allowed man. to actually monitor you and take photos of you and... Yeah. If you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to hide. 
<laughs> oh, like, man. I'm actually thinking, and uh, it's linking with our singularity topic, like, we're going to have to really start... I'm, I'm actually wondering whether we should start advocating, like, data transparency. Yeah. And it's seeming more and more important, because I'm fine with it if yeah. everyone can use it, but if it's just the police that have it all, then... Yeah. It's very... Like, the stuff you can get from this is, like, amazing. Everyone should share everything about their yeah, lives, and, it, and everyone should be allowed to, like analyze that data and come up with really cool algorithms and apps and stuff, but yeah. it should not be in the control of any one corporation, government, or individual. No, no. Otherwise, and, and the problem is, it's happening so fast, I don't think anyone even notices yet. No. Like in five years, this is, <laughs> this is in, yeah. in three years, three years, in five years, I mean... Well, we, we had that tech last week about the guy tracking, picking faces out of any lineup, I mean, it, it's yeah. just here. Wait, um, it, it's I, it's like, I, love, I love the technology. I love it to death. I think this is just incredible what they've managed to do, but just absolutely terrified of the possibilities, especially as you start expanding into the future when yeah. you start assuming that every time you see any authority figure, any time you enter in any building, because this will be in commercial buildings, yeah. this will be everywhere, they see you and they bring up your profile. There's no, literally no hiding. I, I guess we've known that for a while, but I thought it would take longer. Yeah. Unless we replace our lives. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Uh, we'll switch. We'll switch. <laughs> Next week's High 45. Who's <laughs> 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 there with spoons? Just like, ah! <laughs> um, oh, well, here's another one. This is a little bit kind of happy. I, I, I'm a big fan of it, actually. It's a square. It's a mobile payment system. It's like this little tiny square thing that you plug into your end of your iPhone or iPad. Or I think it does with Android as well. I'm not sure. It might just be mm. Apple. Not sure. I don't know. Um, and then you can actually just swipe a credit card across it or a debit card or something and actually a uh, probably just credit card and you can actually take <laughs> payments from it but what is really incredible oh it's made by the founder of Twitter as well Jack Dorsey one, one of the founders one of the founders I don't know which one it is one of them um, yeah right. it was Jack Dorsey but yeah Apple's actually started to promote it in their store because they are just going like crazy exponential growth like they are getting so much money in this it is insane this clip yeah with Square, yeah. Because they can do, I guess, it's good for mobile merchants, mm. people at markets, you know. Well, it's, it's very much in that in-between step between, like, you know, the near-field communication and stuff yeah. that they're bringing out. And That's then the, way, the yeah. actual cards. I've always seen it as that. So hopefully they'll actually... See, then, then, then the problem is, like, after... Once near-field, like, NFC comes in and they're standardized, then what mm. the fuck is Square going to do? Well, that's it. But it, it'll still be people who want to actually, you know, use the cards and stuff. Because, I mean... Unless they... Well, unless they push the authentication yeah, system yeah, they've got with the whole signing and stuff. You sign to your so face. maybe you do NFC, but the processing's done through Square. Yeah. Well, Square could always um, evolve into it. It could be the exact same as Netflix. Yes. Netflix, you know, started with, you know, mailing out DVDs. No one thought that could last. And then they're the biggest distributor in streaming online. Yeah. And that's all they want to do. They'll do a revolutionary new thing where it's Square without the Square. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> Uh, but definitely, <laughs> definitely want to watch if you ever want to um, actually like you know, accept payments and stuff credit card if you want to run a stall in the markets uh, definitely look into Square it's mm. kind of incredible and it's um, definitely on my radar at the moment. it seems it's getting on everyone's that they're just growing and growing and yeah. growing and growing ooh one other quick tidbit uh, tidbit God. Um, tidbits. tidbits tidbits uh, <laughs> Dropbox is predicting to be uh, it doesn't want to have revenue or it might be revenue it's something over a billion dollars what, I don't know. Do they ch they charge for services? Do they? Yeah. Well, Dropbox is just going crazy awesome. I don't know if the net right here, but uh, yeah, the, the the billion dollar figure is being thrown around, which would be uh, by. Uh, so I'd by love to use it if we had decent upload speeds here. Yeah. We get our maximum upload speed is fifty kilobits per second. It, it, maximum. This is the this is the fastest speed you can get in Australia. Well, home stuff. Business. Yeah, well, no, home. business. Yeah, because yeah, business do it, but. We're still at 50 kilobytes. It's still really slow. And we upload this. This is why it's not in HD. Yeah. <laughs> it would take us days to upload. <laughs> it takes us about, I think, three hours to upload an episode. I was playing StarCraft 2 and it kept on dropping me. I got annoyed and then I was like, oh, yeah, oh I was uploading. uploading. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um, so anyway, that's yeah, pretty cool. I also saw a, a rumor, but um, apparently Twitter was offered $10 billion by Google. Yeah, I heard that. Turned it down yeah. and $2 billion by Facebook and turned it down. It's insanity. And people are like, there's, yeah. there's nothing there. There's only like 20 million users. They're not, yeah. they're not making, their they're revenues in the tens of millions. Why the fuck would you offer them that much money? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to change the world. It's going to be the whole new way people do stuff. But yeah, it's, it hasn't manifested really. It has a little. Yeah. What's my uh, next one? Uh, grinding? Yeah, do that one. Ooh. Um, mess with play there over the top. I only got like a few seconds loaded, so let's see. Oh, okay. Anyway, this is a... I gotta remember it all though. 
This is a video, uh, it, it kind of shows the scenario of a smart home. So it's got this guy who's like, he's checking out what's happening and he's, he's like in toaster and everything's talking to him and stuff. And then yeah. does this scenario where he's like, ooh, there might be this girl that's coming over tonight. Ooh. <laughs> and then the house is all like, quick, get ready. We're going to have like a romantic dinner and we're going to, you know, preheat the oven, get that going in 45 minutes and, you know, turn the microwave off, like shut down for the night because, you know, we won't need the microwave tonight because we're going to actually be doing yeah. proper cooking. Blah, blah, blah. Goes through all this process and then eventually she doesn't end up showing up and then it's like, uh, shuts everything down. It's like, <laughs> switch the microwave back on, get get his favorite game ready on the TV. <laughs> Turns the game Bring up red tube, you know. <laughs> and then the funny thing is at the end, um, the chick calls back again in this video and, and he's like, he's looking at it, it's like she's calling and he's like, the game pops up at that instant, on, like the football game on the TV. Because uh, the home's like, yeah, we're watching football. <laughs> and then he hangs up on her and just stays in and just watches football. Oh, bad. <laughs> it's like, it, yeah, they didn't, they messed that up a bit. It, it seems from just like this beginning part, it's very much focused on the UI yeah. compared to that uh, glass thing that we watched, we talked about before. Corny, yeah. compared to the corny. I, I quite like the UI that's actually been shown. I think well, they're, been, they're pushing just a basically like a Twitter stream of you yeah. know, your home yeah. appliances saying, you know, I'm I'm on, I'm ready, I this needs that. They actually show um why not do that? That's really cool. There's a the the cool thing is like it actually just shows your standard objects in the house, but then pops up this little like yeah like little thing coming out saying what what its status is. Yeah, and it's until like you don't really notice it until you actually kind of watch it like this and and imagine that those devices are kind of sentient and talking yeah. to, to each other because then you've got all these devices in your house kind of communicating with each, other, with each other to work out what their status is you know i want to tell people what my status is and yeah it's like a social network for for, for the thing items yeah, yeah. For, the, for, for items there's even one where um the it showed the carpet and the little thing popped up like just a obviously a graphic add-on mm. but it, it was like carpet hasn't been cleaned in like you know 128 days and blah, 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 <laughs> minutes and something and then, because <laughs> this girl's coming over and everyone in the house recognizes that, it's like, okay, quick, you get some power. You, you're allowed to, you know, vacuum now. Go vacuum. Oh, like for the I robot. And then the Roomba there. comes the out and goes and vacuums it everywhere. And... Oh, see, that's cool. I like this. Just the UI of that. That's a it's simple, really cool. simple solution to what I thought was a pretty complicated one. Like, what would be the Internet of Things? But make a basic uh, Twitter stream or something. Not using Twitter, but yeah, a social network. Well, they actually you call this... The make your friends. So you, you create your house and you make friends with your appliances. Well, they actually, I think when you first load it up, it's like, they call it the social web of things. Ah. Oh, Rather than smooth. calling it just the web of things, it's just all the internet of things, it's the social internet of things. Because it's like, your yeah. devices are, are, it's like they've got their own social network and they're talking to each other. This is a very good way to sell it as well, I feel like. Yeah. People know Facebook, people understand the whole making friends and stuff. Now you have your it's home as a mental thing. thing yeah. And you, you, you buy appliances that can now connect with your home. And you buy your home a friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like this. Talk this to is each other. great. This is really cool. Except it's not loading. <laughs> and look, it's by at Bruce's. <laughs> right. uh, okay. Uh, did you have another one? Or I gotta do this one. Uh, I did have one other. Yes. I'll, I'll do the intent over. Okay. Sure. Um, because I can't. It, it's very in depth. It's hard to explain. Yeah, very difficult to explain. Um, this is called Ken and Algorithm to spot the next Google. So there's a company called Quid, which is started up. I think they started up like a year or so back at least. Um, but what they're doing is tracking every piece of data they possibly can about private companies. Particularly, like uh, I think it's thirty thousand tech companies they're tracking, and they're looking at uh, when they're filing patents, um, their tweets, any information they're releasing, like you know, uh, public broadcasts and stuff. Right. What's the term? Um. Anyway, <laughs> and then what they're actually doing is categorizing, putting them into certain uh, a technological genome, like a, a technome or whatever they're calling it. Um, so basically, saying where they sit within the whole tech graph. So a particular company might be doing some some little niche technology that they're working on, but it actually sits in a segment between two already established technologies. I mean, because innovation always comes about on the fringes. It always yeah. comes about by combining two Meeting. technologies and then creating a new one. Life on the edges. Yeah. And so they're creating massive graphs and massive kind of visualizations of all this data and using that primarily now because they want to make money and be a successful company to actually sell that data to investors so they, the, the investors can yeah. work out what's a good company to invest in, which one's going to flop, which one's most likely to ex succeed, where's the new innovation going. And if you analyze it from a, a, you know, sitting back and looking at all, it's, it's essentially mapping the entire innovation sphere of technology and where all the yeah. technology is going. 
They're actually, he literally said on the, like, on one of the, I think even the company page, the whole point is to actually predict where technology is going. Yeah. This is like incredible. Is... When I actually saw that picture of it all connected and all intertwining, then I actually kind of clicked there that it's kind of putting each technology and connecting them all together. Yep. And then as new technologies get developed, you actually just add them to it you so you can it. see where the innovation the... is yeah, the yeah, joining yep. and... This is a great... I'd love to know how they, how they do it. Like how you identify technology as being the first one, obviously. That, <laughs> I mean, there's a million plus a day that you can... Yeah. It's like so much of this just comes into data and analysis. Yeah. Now. All the data's out there, it's just someone has to do something smart. It's a semantic web type thing. They might be using semantic type stuff. Is. Maybe. I think they all use their own proprietary type stuff. So lame. Well, they, they usually scrape the web for all the stuff they need. Yeah, yeah. Put them in their own database, and then do their own analysis and yeah, for sure. stuff on it. It'd yeah. be great to, to mess around with. Did, did it say any article or anything about actually being able to dive in and see it all? Or they, they sell the data, I guess. Yeah, so yeah they sell, they're a company that does it. There's no, yeah. there's no program. It's not something you download. Oh. So it does look pretty cool visualization. Yeah. We go check it out and see what. Like, if you have any other thoughts on it, like, I only just briefly read it. So, there might be some other cool stuff there. Yeah. Um, my next one is, uh, again, not surely too sure what to call it. It's an article in The Guardian called The Internet Is Over. And it's about this guy, he went, uh, the journalist, he went to Texas by the South by Southwest Festival of Fu Film, Music, and Technology. And uh, he's just a, he just wrote about his experiences there. But it, it really stuck out with me because he, he's talking about, like, you know, the internet being over. And uh, the, the quote that really stuck out was that he was asking, well, what the hell is the gamification of healthcare or geofencing or design thinking or open source government? What, I mean, like, what is it specifically? And uh, then the other guy said, look, I, I guess it's kind of everything. And that's kind of what tech is now starting to actually come into. Like, when you thought of technology way back in the day, it was always like, you know, like, you know, the Walkman or something, or it was just on a computer screen. Now, literally, when we talk about technology, when we're talking about all these crazy ideas that we come up with, it's everything in our lives that, that that's kind of like the big change I, I think it's kind of been a, a mind shift without us even knowing that now what's happening rather when we think about technology we're not thinking about just specific products for specific purposes it's it's kind of it, you know like just said a computer it's now yeah. everything everywhere we we I, I struggle to think of something in my life that say couldn't be enhanced with some of the tools out there yeah that's like we're really living through like you know a great renaissance or something it's just like wow everything around us now is, is possible to be able to be uh, improved upon. Well, it's really the, the internet's merging with reality. Yeah. Whereas before, the internet was always yeah, the thing, the desktop computer where you go sit down on and you, and that was you it. surf the internet. Yeah, you surf the separate, internet. It's a separate thing to everything else you do. Whereas now, yeah. with, uh, probably the mobile phone really kicked it off. I think it did. It's, I really think it did. The mobile phone just <clears throat> instantly said, you know, fuck that, the internet is now everywhere. Mm. And now that's what everyone's doing. Like all of these amazing products coming out like crazy is yeah. actually converting the real world into, well, something, <laughs> which we can talk about the singularity topic. But check out this uh, uh, article. It's, uh, they're saying it could be the Web 3.0, but I think Web 3.0 has been surpassed by mobile. But uh, yeah. Yay. So our Yay. topic, I guess, was just, a, just, I think that just that idea of the internet and uh, this whole technology kind of, what is technology, I guess? Leeching office and yeah. stuff? Yeah. It's, it's a really great article. Like, to preface this discussion, uh, I just watched it again recently, probably been one of the more, more influential things mm -hmm. I've ever watched, it was a, a talk by Susan Blackmore on the nature of memes, and uh, it was on TED. It's really worth yeah. looking at, really worth checking out. Yeah. And then like, not really, you must You must it. check it out, yeah. It's, it's not those, like something, yeah. oh, yeah, maybe it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you really um just watching it again after like uh, we saw it about two years ago I think for the first time yeah and just watching it again like just some of the right words right. she was saying again was just like whoa what the hell and uh, one of the things that words that really stuck out was the idea that technology is like a it's a symbiote it's a we have a symbiotic relationship with it yeah that it is or even a parasitic relationship that it it, <laughs> it is entirely yeah. existent upon us and then it's it's actually kind of molded us to be the perfect things for it yeah. And, and one way you can think of it is like it, it, it could actually be a virus that mm. is, it has infected it's like a mimetic virus a, or she calls it teams for technology means but mim yeah. mimetic virus has mimetic. kind of in, infected our brains and it's kind of just been taking over ever since yeah the, the, the idea of technology we, we always think we're in control of the technology ever since they're in a written mm -hmm. word but you, you could make the argument, and this is really far out there, but it's an interesting thought experiment at least, is that you could say that as soon as like, you know, the written word was born and technology, technology being everything, like uh, as soon as that was born, then it became like, you know, the greatest species on the planet that it yeah. took over us. It has been slowly training us to actually interact with yeah. it. She's also even going along the lines of like, 
uh, because we're mean machines, we've actually got bigger brains that can handle more memetic information. Yeah. Actually, because her, her idea is that there's so many, there's more memes out there than there are brains. So they're always trying to, there's more information and data and potential ideas out there than there are brains to yeah. hold it all. So our brains are as big as we possibly can without, you know, killing the woman. Killing it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we're, they're just big enough that we've actually survived as a species and are still here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. It is very high. <laughs> it gets weird. Like you get into the, I don't know, you get, you get into a lot of the, the crazy thoughts and stuff of being that you start to think of like, you know, alien species or something. And then you, you think of all technology. I'd like to refer to it as the machine. Like, you know, the machine is actually the one that's now starting to communicate with us. Like the, the birth of artificial intelligence, I, I, I think is misnomer. It's, it's a, it's just kind of an idea, idea that Nathan came up with before that artificial intelligence isn't that like we've already got artificial intelligence we'll recognize artificial intelligence when we finally can communicate yeah. with uh, the other intelligence that's here, yeah. which is the technology. Yeah, it's just, it's very, it doesn't look like it's alive and at that level. And no, even the, though... The internet talks, it's an insanely complicated machine, mm. insanely complicated brain, if you want to call it that, but it operates in ones and zeros, and how the... F we can't talk to ones and zeros. <laughs> we can't operate that's what, even that's the close. Whole, we're trying to get it, bring it down to our kind of natural language processing level. Yeah, that we understand so that we can talk to it and it can understand us and vice versa and then it becomes a, a completely symbiotic. And that's where you get kind of that weird idea with the, the singularity and stuff because uh, there, <clears throat> there was that idea of the TED talk before about the guy who followed his uh, child's first words and stuff. Yeah. Just coming up with this now actually but you know how the, the parents were actually the most, some of the most important because they had to dumb themselves down until that they were at the same level of like you know saying the word water as the child. Yeah. And I mean if you did the argument that say technology was up here like it, knew, it knows the laws of the universe knows how it works we're down here it's training us to actually be smarter and then technology is getting dumber to actually interact as soon as we actually are at that peak it can then start shooting us straight back up into the amazing world yeah and that could be like a singularity point that's pretty cool yeah but just the, the whole idea of just looking at technology very much as infecting us and uh, well there's yeah there's an the idea that um uh was it like you're not really in control it, it's kind of like yeah like, one of the points is uh, that you know do you think we wanted the internet to happen or did the internet just happen and then we just had to yeah live with it like because when you think about um you know you can't suddenly tomorrow say I'm going to stop technology I'm going to stop the internet I'm, I don't want any more of it it's you not become the happen. Unabomber if you do because that's exactly what he was yeah. like well he, he foresaw what was kind of happening and had a you know negative weird response response to it <laughs> and stuff but um it's it's true though like you can't we none of us can stop and say oh I don't want it no so in that sense it's in control not us because yeah. for, for us to actually stop it you need some cataclysmic event or you need every single one in the entire human species the entire hive to actually just say no nah. but see that they couldn't do that because technology has worked so well with them yeah the so... technology has trained those people to be like no no that never would do that yeah we have lofty ideas like you know meet any first year uni student they'll change the world but they, you, you can't, you can't get that, that meme out there. Well, like without tractors and stuff, we wouldn't be able to get food. Like at that exactly. level. But then even with the internet, like, you know, can you think of like, you know, I'd hate to go back to dial-up speeds or I'd hate to go, <laughs> yeah. I'd hate oh, to go oh, back no. to like a 15 inch monitor. Oh man. Well, I just hate the idea of like, you know, not, not mobile phones. I remember growing up with a landline. That sucked. Yeah. Not being able to contact anyone. Imagine calling someone's house now. It doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, but very much that like, well, we're not in control at all about what's actually happening here. That we've just become, you know, slaves to the machine or something. Yeah. Yeah. I hate saying it, but it's, 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 it's very true in that regard. Well, very much like, it. I, I didn't realize that the the Matrix, uh, the original Matrix, the way it was written, yeah, it was, that was about using humans at, brains as a computational power. Yeah, I, I didn't. I thought it was just the whole like you know using it as energy source being. Yeah, that, that was in the original script, but when The Matrix came out, it was like 1999, they were saying that people still didn't have the idea of what computers were and like right. ubiquitous computing and like cloud the cloud servers. Like that's essentially what the humans were. You know? Yeah. But um, so I said, yeah, make it a battery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I guess it really comes down to, to that again. Yeah, just the, the no control, the, the virus take us over and viewing technology maybe as the actual alien species and not alien by it's actually come from another planet fuck that it was came, came from here but that it is another species and that it is profoundly different and where it's lovely willing slaves yeah in a sense when it just goes um, to i mean the, the best thing of it is to actually make us happy like if you're going to far future where the actual processing parts are the ones that are still a little bit weird yeah well, it's still massive, like, I don't think, it's still massive symbiosis, like, it needs us, we need it. At the moment, yeah. If you're going to separate it like that. Yeah. So, it's, 
not not a big issue, but then it gets into the things where um the algorithms for people. The algorithm, like we we're talking about, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, yeah, and I, I'm concerned about that. It's just like, and that, this is in like the next five to ten years, very easily. Where again, we have a, each have a unique algorithm that can predict. I mean, if it can predict what we're gonna do next, then. <laughs> it's, it's got, yeah, perfect. <laughs> well, we just fit in. I don't even know how to wrap my brain around that. <laughs> if, if there's a system that's like, oh, you're going to do this next, and like I do it, or even like, we'll see, then you would, yeah. you'd be like, oh, no, no, I was going to do that anyway. Yeah, he, like, it'd be that whole oh. machine. It's like, uh, the machine's just being really obvious. Of course I was going to yeah. do that. Of course I was going to go, you know, And then if you told you after the fact, you'd be like, uh, whatever. Yeah, of course. But if, if you had a system like that, what does that mean to be an individual, to be a human, to be... There is no such thing, like, like, again, it's kind of the... There is no free will at the moment, but then it, it kind of, it's kind of the manifestation of, like, there is definitely yeah. no free will. <laughs> yeah. Because here, I can tell you what you're going to do next. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you what you're going to do for the next, like, yeah. period of time moving forward. So, and what are you? <laughs> more accurate and more accurate and more accurate. And they can do that. Yeah, it's, it's already out now. there now. Facebook, like, I'm sure they're doing it. There's, I've heard stuff about Visa Correct. and MasterCard. They can actually predict up to three years in advance with 98% certainty when you will divorce. Yeah. Just based on financial, just financial transactions. If you can track... We've had track this idea everything. of, like, track everything. Just record everything. If you recorded every detail about your life, which is inevitable, you know, route of this whole social networking paradigm at the moment of sharing stuff... If you record everything, then eventually there's going to be data that just goes back through algorithms, algorithms. that go back through and analyze all that previous data, work out your specific algorithm, and then that's that's you. You know, <laughs> you're there. That's you, and then you can just you're gonna do this next. But yeah, the machine tells you what to do. It's not that it lets you do whatever. It'll slowly guide you into where it would think that you'd be the best fit, and you'll be like, no, of course that's the best idea. Of course that's the best idea. Of course that's the best idea. Small steps, the same way that you know, hey. Create genocide or something. It's always very small steps, but the machine can actually start guiding everyone into their correct spots and yeah. the correct part. Because so they're not for, for maximum anymore. computation. Maximum computation. We then become the computer that the exactly, exactly like a factory farm that we've actually started. Exactly, you know, yeah. guiding the cows into the most. You know, the best part. I thought you were going to do the happy. You're going to do the happy one. Well, this is a very depressing topic. <laughs> But see, look, we but can be as happy as cows. Like, well, we cows will be, happy. No one, see, no one will notice. No, no one will no, give no, a no, shit. No. no one will notice this Pretty at very all. very similar right there. Like, you know, we've got our pens in our house and all that. Yeah, our, our cattle pens. I know. <laughs> and you, don't go into the other, you don't go into the other cattle pen because that's wrong. I know. <laughs> There's no rules. That, well, there are rules, but... It's very odd. It, yeah. That's why I'd like to... I, if I want to walk from point A to point B, I'd just go in a straight line. But yeah. no, I have to walk along the footpaths so that yeah. you give them to me. And even subconsciously, I'm directed by them. I think I've got to get into, like, go to a very large bit of land. Like, the suburbia thing, I think, gets me into that mindset that I'm just a node in the system. <laughs> yeah. Hectic. Anyway. But, see, in one sense, I think this is a, This is going to be awesome. Like, I am, I'm very looking forward oh, to it's it. Pure, it's pure creativity. When we look at the happiness, it is just us sitting in our pens, actually, being yeah. happy and creating. All we do is create. There, there's, it's a, a society of abundance. We never have to worry about anything. We'll probably live for thousands, if not millions yeah. of years. We'll still have fun, but we'll just be thinking the whole time. Yeah. And, well, and we, the, 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 the machine will be analysing all our thoughts and everything yeah. we do to try and come up with something better and yeah. interconnecting you with people who... It's when we don't become in control anymore. Like it's that, it's that idea that we won't want the control because that, that'll be the way that it just goes. But we, we've the, the the control is now by the machine. It's by whatever algorithms and processes is being run there. Even if like yeah. like my whole goal is like you know to be part of the, the singularity, in the, you know the prefrontal cortex of the Earth to brain or something. Brain and stuff, yeah. yeah, to be in that part. But even then, like my intelligence is just so minutely small to compared to like you know what what's yeah. there like in the in the machine. That even if you were the person, say that the human who had the most control over the machine or could actually put the algorithms in, you are still such such an insignificant factor after just a, a decade or so. Yeah, uh, not a decade now when you actually become a part of it. Because it's probably going from this whole Western ideal of individualism is awesome, yeah. and, and I'm my own person. I control my own destiny. <laughs> yeah. and I am awesome. I am the greatest person ever. Yeah. To a more hard, hardcore, yet to be invented Eastern philosophy, yeah, philosophy of collectivism, collectivism to the nth degree, where it's just like, well, you're one blip mm. in an infinite number of blips, but you, you're yeah. still very, very important. You make, you make up the system. You are. The system could not operate without you. 
well, one happy thing, I think. Actually, that I think we are going to be some of the last people who are going to be able to actually change it because we won't be able to be made into a pure algorithm because data from like you know the past history, anything that wasn't recorded to the machine has been lost. Yeah. As soon as like you know, as I said it before, as soon as a child's born in, that everything's recorded. That's like you know, then that child is, doesn't exist as like a human. Like you've got a machine there, you can replace it. But since there's so many of us now that have actually been born with so much you know history that hasn't been put into it, we can still always change a little bit. Because they'll have they'll have I'll algorithms that the can do history. They, they know the full history. I know ninety nine point nine 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 percent certainly what I'll do. But, but then there's yeah, then there's always that choice. You know the matrix choice and all of that. <laughs> I'm going to Zion, bitches. So we are the one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're all the one. That's in Kumbaya. Just not those kids that are born where every infinite life, every second of their life is recorded. Yeah, I'm kind of proud. But my kid's gonna be like that. So yeah. fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one watching. <laughs> Anyway, was there uh, any other points to add to that? No, I think we missed bad. stuff. That was pretty good. Okay. Uh, tell us what you think. I really like this thing. This, is, this is a very dark thought one as well, by the way. But it is a, it's a, it's a definite progression. It's like we've got missed any steps of logic there. Please tell us. Yeah. I think it's I think it again is inevitable as the police being able to identify you on the street. It's just the whole uh, you got to make that economy of jump that technology is kind of a separate thing and it's kind of <laughs> yeah. It's in control, it, like, it, but yeah. everyone seems to be going along that lines. Like, like even Kelly, Kevin Kelly is talking about, you know, what does technology want? Yeah, he's talking about it in the sense of like it's its own thing. You can't stop it because no well, one was going to stop it. Though the, the Kevin Kelly, what does technology want? Though was that it? was like my thoughts. So. Well, I'm I just know. saying he talks about it in, in the sense of like yeah, it's a separate entity. Yeah, the look at technology. This is like you know as a as a thing just All for a technology. week or so. All technology, anything that wasn't creative. Computers. Yeah, not just computers. Everything as a separate type of thing and then you watch how it evolves, just remove humans from the picture. You can almost think of all technology as like, that's its body. The internet right now is kind of its nervous system and brain. Yeah, and then the roads are its blood cells. Yeah, yeah. Look at a road and imagine it as, as blood cells yeah. just traveling, because it's... Yeah, we've already got the nerves, we've already so... got the blood cells. So. And then also look down on Google Maps, look at the houses. I, I, I like looking at them as like transistors. Yeah, yeah the, the little, little houses blocks. all lined up. Little stems. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Hello, well, uh, catch you sense. next week. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. <laughs> I just saluted. What the fuck was that? <laughs> mm.